Rugby league is a sport which has always aimed to break down barriers. From its inception in 1895, when a number of clubs tried to challenge rugby status quo, to 1972, when Clive Sullivan became the first black player to captain a British side, to 2010, when Gareth Thomas became the first openly gay British sports star. This is Gareth Thomas! I think he might have got this down, has he? In 2011, the sport of rugby league is taking the lead again, launching a game-wide program aimed at tackling discrimination and abuse based on gender, faith, race, age, disability or sexual orientation. I think it's extremely important for the sport to be able to welcome people from all types of backgrounds because it brings a, a richness, a diversity, a lots and lots of talents, lots and different viewpoints and I think a sport is so much better for that and I, I certainly think as an organisation the RFL is better for that and I certainly think as a sport we're much better for people, having people from so many different types of backgrounds and so many different points of view. Rugby league is a sport that really is on the ball and it's aimed at absolutely everyone. I think it's important for women to be involved in rugby league and the game because it's going to open up avenues for all women then to keep coming in because the more that come in, the more they're going to get away from this male-dominated environment so there'll be more pathways for the women to go down. Like myself, I've been down the, the refereeing pathway but also the coaching pathway um, and there's also just working within rugby league clubs, there's play in the game, so I think there's plenty of opportunities for women to get involved in the game. Rugby league has something for you regardless of your gender, from playing to officiating to volunteering, it really is a sport for all. I just think it's an exciting sport, it's an honest sport and uh, it's just something that the kids enjoy, there's always a lot happening. Uh, well there's never any um, bad atmosphere in the crowd, you know it's all friendly rivalry, you feel completely safe to bring the kids. As a, as a young kid, you know, to have the bottle to go on a field and referee a game, um, you know, it, it, it's unbelievable really when I see some of the young people doing it, I only started refereeing when I was 27, but to see 13, 14 year olds doing it, um, what we've got to do is make sure that they're looked after, you know, make the people, educate the people that are watching that, you know, this is a child and you wouldn't accept that behaviour against your child. You know, just because he's got the referee shirt on doesn't mean that you, you can basically say whatever you like to him. Um, I, I think the education thing of those people is the way to go forward. In 2011, the RFL became the first sports organisation to enter the Stonewall Top 100 Equality Index. And the Sheffield Eagles became the first club in British sporting history to wear a kit with an anti-homophobia logo. In the schools, I think the kids look up to me a little bit because I play rugby. And they always ask me, the first question is, because uh, I'm doing this sort of thing, uh, are you gay? And I would always say, no, I'm not gay. And then they ask, why, why would you do something like this then? So they say, oh, well, I believe in equal opportunities for everybody, uh, no matter what colour, creed, or your, or your beliefs. I can't, I can't say how important it is for rugby league, who have gone out there, actually, with the Tackle It uh, campaign, um, as, a, as a leader in the sport. And that's what we've been really calling for. Um, if it doesn't come from within sports, tackling homophobia and transphobia, just as we saw with the kick it out for racism, um, then it doesn't happen. It's not centre stage, it's not at the front of people's minds. And so Rugby League really have gone out there and said, we're taking this on. In fact, I went up to Sheffield Eagles, um, where they wore, all of the whole team wore shirts saying, tackle, tackle it. And um, it was wonderful to see these big burly men taking it on and saying, you know, we're cool and everyone should be cool because it really doesn't matter, does it? What your sexual orientation is, what your gender identity is. My partner suggested last year that we ought to go to the Challenge Cup final at Wembley and I've got to admit I did have reservations about attending 
but I needn't have worried because it was a fantastic environment to be in. It was, there was the supporters not only from Leeds and Warrington in the Shets, but supporters from all of the different clubs in the rugby league. It just made for a great party atmosphere. The two main things that we've introduced for our clubs is a guidance on how to tackle homophobic abuse and language in a club setting. And we've also set up and developed an LGBT forum, which is open to any LGBT staff, players, coaches or match officials. My faith is really important to me because it's an integral part of who I am. It's uh, the makeup of who I am. It's, it's the way I've been brought up. Um, I think, you know, it's the way that my family has brought me up and as some, it's a way that I want to portray myself to other people as well, so uh, it's, I'd say that it is probably the most important part of my life. I think it's really important that everybody's welcome in this rugby league, regardless of their faith, regardless of their religion, their, their skin colour, whatever. I think it's really important because it shows that rugby league uh, entails all, all parts of life, uh, all aspects of life, all different people. Uh, we're talking people who are old in age to, to kids that are four years old. Like all areas of society, there's no place for racism in rugby league. We're one of the true pioneers in UK sport with our anti-racism campaigns and programmes. For my father, it was one of those highlights of his career, being a, a really proud Welshman and also a proud, uh, proud British man, to, to captain his country and to take them on to that success. I'm not sure he was aware at the time of the impact of him being the, the first black captain of a British sporting team, but it's been something that's, that I've uh, picked up on and I'm really proud of that fact. Well, Rugby League has got a, a long and proud history of being inclusive to all sections of society. Uh, and we place no apology for ensuring that our game is free from abuse and free from discrimination. Uh, and we would urge everybody to support that stance and report anybody who they hear engaging in antisocial behaviour or abusive behaviour and not tolerate it. Encouraging the next generation of players and supporters is critical to the future of the game. And that is why the RFL, together with its constituent clubs, have developed classrooms and educational resources to ensure we get the right messages across. Well, I was nervous when I first came into rugby league, but everybody made me welcome and that stretches my dig better. I'm meeting new people and I got made more than and help me get through. I wouldn't like to be um, a person that's disabled and be told no I can't um, play a sport you know I've always loved doing sports even as an able-bodied person so I think um, to, to be able to you know continue and carry on playing sports is absolutely essential. Rugby league as a sport is showing the way forwards towards a more considerate caring and welcoming society that celebrates difference. This is your sport whoever you are.